Rough trade take their anti-commercial principles into the recording studio. It's not just lack of resources that make them choose to record in the basement of a terraced house. They make do-it-yourself records in a homemade studio as a matter of policy. Hello, hello, Mike. How are you? <laughs> I, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. 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 This is uh, Studio One. See how much attitude we can risk it. We like to make records in someone's living room. But if you take people that haven't previously existed in a very luxurious environment and put them in a very expensive studio surrounded with huge amounts of technology and professional people, they're intimidated by it. Hey, hello folks. How do you fancy just having a quick recording of Supermarket? Right. And then, uh, We're looking and then forward. we can have a listen to it, all right? Yeah. Okay. We're looking forward. Right, so it's rolling. Is it rolling, Bob? Come on. It's Come rolling. On. confronted with a situation where the engineer plumps himself in the middle and you've got to find, try and find some ways where you can listen to it. You don't have, you know, like access to it. You can't change the way things sound. You have to ask and you have a chain of command. It just sets up a whole set of relationships that are very difficult to break. And here it's easier uh, to get at it, if you like. The access is greater. We're not Luddites. I mean, we don't smash up machinery and go back to, you know, the 17th century, but we feel happy learning about the technical process with, with a technical, um, you know, a board in front of us that we can understand, that we can learn on. Being a producer, I mean, you know, all it means is that you give your musical ideas, you say, well, I hear it like this, it sounds like this to me, it would sound better as so-and-so. I mean, it's a job that anyone that's listened to music seriously could do. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's a bit trivial. Too trivial. Yeah. 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 It's a bit scratchy. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. 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 Especially on the long note, it sounds a bit sort of... Okay. It's a bit yeah. like a wire. <laughs> is where music becomes product, where sounds are linked to sales. But the sound of rough trade records is raw and uncomfortable, even deliberately unpleasant. They refuse to use studio techniques to make their groups easy on the ear. Sandy Perlman has said quite, you know, plainly, the reason that he produced The Clash the way that, they, that he did was because he wanted them to be heard in America. And if they were not produced in a certain way, then the American ears just would not hear it. You know, it's like, they're closed. And I think, I mean, that's wrong. It, it, is a, it is a mistaken way of approaching the problem. I mean, you see, what, and what everyone thinks is if you don't do that, then all you're doing is cutting off your chance to survive in the marketplace. And that's one of the things that we're fighting against. We're saying the marketplace is a forced creation and has very little to do with the reality of what people might want, given the options. Now, I suppose, in a way, we're incredibly egotistical about it. I mean, we measure the success of a rough trade record by how happy the band are with what's being produced in the recording studio, what they've done, and how happy everyone at Rough Trade is. I mean, if we were all convinced it was good and the rest of the world thought it was, it was lousy, you know, we, we'd, we'd probably be quite happy to stay in our insane asylum alone. 